Hey guys, Sarah here. So today I'm going to be doing something a little bit different, a little bit almost controversial, uh, because a lot of the Q&A questions that you guys have sent to me this week are actually about Brian Barczyk of BHB Reptiles. Uh, now I say it's controversial because anytime anyone is critiquing anyone big online, it seems like, you know, things blow up and people are thrown under the bus and people are, you know, hurt and whatever. And, and I just want to say that this video is not to throw any shade at Brian at all. I've met him in person a few times. I really do think that he's a really nice guy and I really do think he genuinely loves the animals that he's breeding so please don't send him any hate or anything that's not what this is about uh, the questions that were sent to me were just about some like sort of eyebrow raising things that he has said in a couple of vlogs about corn snake genetics here recently and I just want to clear those things up for you guys so um, I'm not going to be actually giving the names of people who sent me these questions because again I don't want to throw anyone under the bus I don't want anyone to feel like I'm calling them out so I'm just going to make all these questions they're, they're all anonymous and uh, I'm just going to kind of go through them. Um, I'm going to be referencing the videos that I'm talking about by the date that they were posted and not by the names because the names of his vlogs are like super crazy. So the first one is actually from the vlog on August 14th, 2020. Around the 10 minute and 27 second mark, he is talking about a clutch that he hatched between a tessera het scalus to a scalus. Now, um, he says a few things in this that uh, I think that maybe he makes one assumption and then that assumption leads to another assumption, which leads to another one. And then it kind of has this domino effect, but because the first assumption was incorrect, everything else that he says is incorrect also. Not everything, but a lot of different things. So I'm just going to go over these things. Um, he picked up, the first snake that he picked up out of this clutch is an albino stripe. Uh, I'm going to use the term amel instead of albino because I think it's more precise, but um, it's actually not a stripe. What he had there is actually a tessera motley. So um, he says that he produced all these different stripes in this clutch and it's because the parents were hit for motley and that means that motley and stripe are allelic, which is true, but then he also makes the assumption that like tessera is allelic to motley and stripe and that's why he also got tesseras. Or uh, I think he also made the assumption that tessera is allelic to scalus and that's why some of them were scalus and some of them were tessera and so those were all very confusing things i just wanted to clear up for you guys so um first thing like i said all of these stripe looking snakes in that clutch are actually tessera motleys so Brian, if you're watching, which I hope you are, I hope someone shares this with you. If you're watching, please do not sell those stripes as just stripes. Uh, you can sell them for like five times more as tessera motleys because that's what they actually are. Uh, the original tesseras were actually thought to be uh, motleys. They were part of a like Okatee motley breeding project. Uh, and when they were actually, like actually started to produce other snakes, people found out that hey, there's this tessera gene in there. So um, those striped are actually not, like they're not stripes. They are tessera motleys. And that's what tessera does to motley. Um, the next thing that he mentions is that tessera is dominant. It's actually, or he mentions that tessera is incomplete dominant. It's actually dominant. Uh, for those of you who don't know the difference, a dominant gene is when you breed a homozygous version to a normal, all the babies will look exactly like the homozygous version of the dominant parent. Um, and then incomplete dominant is if you breed the homozygous version to a normal, all the babies will have like an in, an in between look. Uh, one example of this is palmetto. So the palmetto, as you might know, is an all white corn snake with little speckles of color. And if you breed that to a normal, all the babies are going to be this really light hypo type color, uh, not looking like either parent, but looking like sort of a combination between the two genes. So um, that him saying that might kind of explain why he thought that um, tessera is allelic to scalus, but I assure you it is not. They are completely different genes. Uh, he also mentioned that the non-visual anery and amel babies were going to be het for amel and anery. And, um, and maybe hypo. I couldn't tell if there was any hypo in there, but um, there... I, I don't know what the parents were of that snake exactly, but from what I inferred from what he was saying, they probably are actually only 66% possibly hit for those two genes. So um, it could be, if there's visual in the parent, then I'm wrong on that. But um, I kind of didn't really get that from what he was saying. I kind of understood that maybe he was um, not breeding like a snow tessera or whatever to these babies. Maybe, or not to the babies, to, to the scalus. Maybe he was, but um, just sort of putting that out there. If two parents do not show a recessive gene, then uh, but one of the babies does, that means that the rest of the babies have a 66% chance of being het for that. 
The next one that I want to go over is his vlog on August 16th, 2020, around the 5 minute and 12 second mark. Um, here he bred what he calls creamsicle scaleless, and uh, just for, you know, future reference for everybody, um, all scaleless actually originated from a corn snake being bred to a Great Plains rat snake, uh, which is where the corn, the creamsicle corn comes from. That's the Amel version. The Amelinistic version is called creamsicle. The normal version is called root beer, etc. There's, there's other, other versions as well. I think maybe cinnamon is one of them. Um, and there's a few other things, but, uh, all... All uh, scaleless are technically hybrids with the Great Plains rat snake. Um, so when he mentioned that this one is specifically a creamsicle scaleless, uh, I was a little confused, but I think that what he means is that these have a much higher percentage of the um, emory or the Great Plains rat snake than the other scaleless would. And potentially it's 50-50. It could be that these are, um, you know, one parent was actually a pure emory That's what it, it could be. Um, and if you don't know what an emory looks like, which is Great Plains rat snake, they're the same. Um, they are very similar to corn snakes, but they have more of an olive tone to their skin. Uh, sometimes it comes in as a brown, but it's more of like an olive brown color, whereas corn snakes are much more red in color. And um, so when you breed scaleless into that, especially in the babies, you're going to see this sort of green olive hue. And uh, he was attributing that green olive hue to the green blotched and or halo in corn snakes. He was specifically saying, oh, well, when you see the green blotched in corn snakes, it's because of this green that comes over from the emory And that's actually just not the case. Now, it could be that they do have some, you know, great ancestor between, you know, like corn snakes and emory are very closely related, but um, they don't, that doesn't necessarily mean that because one of them has a similar gene to the other that it's a hybrid gene. Uh, it is very likely that they had a an ancestor not that long ago that had that gene and then when it branched off both different species got that same gene or that same look or the same aspect to them. So just because the emory has more of an olive skin tone that does not mean that all of the green blotched and halo corn snakes are going to be from emory uh, In fact, I believe that it's more the opposite. Some of the earliest, um, ep like some of the earliest green blotched and stuff that we see are actually from coral snow lines um, and salmon snow lines from years and years and years ago. Some of the original corals and salmons were coming out in the 1990s. So um, if you really do believe that this green blotched is coming from the emory eye, then you kind of have to say that all coral snows are also hybrids, and I just don't believe that's the case. Uh, so I hope that that kind of cleared up a few things uh, for you guys. I know that this is um, kind of a weird vlog, but I did want to just mention, not vlog, <laughs> he does the vlogs, I do the, the Q&As. I know this is weird, um, but again, don't send him any hate. Um, he, you know, I, I don't believe he's lying to anyone. I think he just doesn't know some things and um, he just sort of says something off the cuff and doesn't quite understand what the, you know, what he's saying, like the weight of what he's saying is. Um, and when people come to me and they say, um, hey, I never would have bought that snake from you if I thought it was a hybrid. And I have to say, no, 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 hold on, full stop. Let's back up and talk about why you think this is a hybrid. Then uh, it does affect the credibility of other people in the corn snake community as well. So I just wanted to clear this up for you guys. I hope that this helped and I hope that it wasn't like mean or rude or anything. And I honestly, if Brian sees that, I really do hope that it helps him understand what he has in his clutches as well. Because if he's going to be selling those, if he's going to be selling his, uh, Tessera Motley's at stripe price, then uh, I might have to hit him up. <laughs> Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next video.